speaker. Good. Uh, the next speaker is uh, Nadav Tzafrir, who was already on this stage, so maybe he doesn't need an introduction, but he's the co-founder and CEO of Team 8. I think uh, if you don't know who Team 8 is, then go outside. Uh, Israel is uh, leading cybersecurity foundry. Prior to that, um, uh, Nadav was a founder of Israeli Defense uh, Forces, Command Cyber, and he was a commander of a famous Unit 82. 200, uh, an elite military technology, again, if you don't know, go out. Uh, Team 8 uh, has its own idea about collaboration of uh, technologies and cyber expertise in order to come up with ideas. I'll, add, I'll let uh, Nadav introduce that by himself. And by that, they are trying to build the next uh, innovations for all of us. Nadav holds an LLB uh, from an interdisciplinary center uh, and MBA from uh, both Tel Aviv University and uh, Kolag uh, School of Management, uh, New Western University. Welcome, Nadav. this and this, um, and I can't see anybody. Well, I wanted to tell you that over the years, um, I've had uh, the honor to meet uh, some very interesting people, uh, heads of state, uh, uh, leaders of enterprises. But the other day, I was really excited uh, when the Prince of Nigeria uh, asked me for help personally. Uh, so this was not just a courtesy call. Um, this was a cry for help. and. I'd imagine that many people in the crowd uh, have had the same honor as well. And we take it for what it is, right? Um, but if you look at this one, um, it's a little bit more, it looks legit, right? PayPal, we all got PayPal, most of us. Um, and somebody's now telling us that there's going to be, uh, uh, there's, I just, got into my PayPal account and there's a new uh, address and I want to make sure that it's legit or not. So what do I do uh, uh, with that? And I don't want to give you a talk about phishing attacks. Um, probably um, at the low end of the totem pole when it comes to breaching your endpoint devices. Um, but I do want to talk about the fact that once somebody does breach your endpoint, in many senses now they are you because they can impersonate you and whatever you can do, they can do as well. So, Rob Joyce uh, from the TAO at the NSA spoke about this publicly at the beginning of the year. That somehow, at the end of the day, they're able to penetrate your endpoint and circumvent all the defenses that all of us have been talking about all day long and when they're in, well, they're in. And I think in many ways this happens because human nature is to make mistakes. And so we do. And by the way, that's probably a good thing. Because if we didn't make mistakes, we wouldn't innovate and evolve and get better. And if human nature is to make mistakes, Machines are naturally imperfect. And these operating systems that have begun as something that operated a handful of tasks that were pretty straightforward and clear have evolved into this monstrous, monolithic, general purpose system of everything that controls everything that we do. Literally hundreds of millions of lines of code and they're supposed to be perfect because they're designed and built to be perfect. And if you're wondering, I personally believe we're failing miserably. And there's this connection, sort of this bonding between man and machine or woman and machine. And this connection, I think, of these people that make mistakes and these imperfect machines is probably the perfect petri dish for disaster 
when we speak about our operating systems. And so I think we have to start designing for failure. Now I'm not talking about the concept of security by design or cybersecurity by design. I'm not against it, it's important, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm actually talking about a phenomena that has been around for many years in critical infrastructure that have to be reliable. Um, and that is designing for failure. So <clears throat> Omar from Accenture said that as soon as a ship was invented, the wreck was invented. And the question is why? What if we design the ships this way, which is actually what happens? If there's a spill in one area, that doesn't necessarily mean that the, ship has, that the whole ship has to sink. If you think about nature, think about nature in terms of diversity. So polyculture in nature is where you have different crops at the same area and in modern agriculture we've started to adopt monoculture. So you have hundreds of thousands of acres of exactly the same crop. You know what, that's not sustainable. Over time, that kills the soil. One pest can kill the whole thing. And we did it because it was much more efficient. But modern agriculture now is starting to adopt polyculture concepts from nature. And we find that it's not only more resilient, it's also more sustainable, and thus it's more efficient, and thus it's more profitable. And talking about operating systems, I think we see vendors doing it as well. We're taking the first steps by operating system vendors. So let's talk about Apple. So in iOS now, when you have the, your, the data for your fingerprint, that's not stored in the general purpose bloated monolithic operating system, but in a separate hardware enclave. So if somebody does breach your endpoint, your iOS, they don't have the data for your fingerprint. And that makes sense. Bharat was here and spoke about what Microsoft was doing. Windows 10, I think, takes this to the next step where you have sort of a designated side-by-side -side operating system that stores your credentials so that it's impossible to do stuff as easy as pass the hash or Kerberos ticketing or all that stuff. And I think these are important steps. What I think is that we might win a couple of battles that way, but I don't think we're gonna win the war. And so, and this is, uh, 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 this is heartbreaking, but I think we have to break up with our operating systems. I think that this inseparable bonding between man and machine should be broken because we cannot expect, just like Rob Joyce said from the NSA, for people to stop making mistakes. And we shouldn't be expecting our machines or operating systems to be perfect. And so what I mean is we want to have an environment at our endpoint where we can use multiple operating systems from multiple instances all at the same time. And I think it's possible to do this not only seamlessly for the user, which is obviously uh, has been an impediment until now, but also something livable for IT. The reason is that in terms, in terms of our hardware, um, there's tremendous progress over the last two decades. Take, your, take our RAMs at the endpoint, right? Uh, two decades ago, what it was like eight megabytes, now we're talking RAM of eight gigabyte or more. Um, storage, from one gigabyte to a terabyte at your endpoint. Uh, we used, to use, we used uh, uh, one slow processor, we're now using multiple processors that are much faster than we could have imagined 20 years ago. That allows virtualization, that allows us to use the cloud, and all this together, I think, is a pretty good ground for breaking up with our operating system. So imagine if you have not one, but two or three instances of Windows operating system. 
alongside the same endpoint with a couple of instances of Linux, working together simultaneously, seamlessly, to the user and to the IT. Now, you know, there, there are a thousand ways to breach a network, and probably a thousand more. And I'm not saying that by breaking up with your operating system, attackers are not going to breach your system or your operating system, but who cares? Or if you do, the only thing I'm saying is by doing this, you might dramatically lower the probability that this specific breach into your operating system will create a systematic devastating conclusion at any breach into your network. So this is what we've been thinking about uh, um, in the last uh, few months. Um, and like uh, uh, Dorit said, we're going to try to do something about it. Thank you very much.